God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So, how many commandments are there? Well, if you said ten, Scripture agrees with you. Scripture tells us that there are ten commandments. But now here's the challenge question. Can you read off all ten commandments in the back of your mind within ten seconds? To be honest, most of us have become a little lax in knowing and understanding the Ten Commandments. Our Old Testament reading for today brings up these Ten Commandments for a very good reason. Here's that reason. If you don't know the Ten Commandments, then you may not really know your Savior. Yes, the Ten Commandments are that important. So let me explain why. Let's first start with Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. So, before we get into the Ten Commandments, we have to see how God introduces it. He states, I am the Lord your God, that God was the one who brought out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of the slavery, his people. And God wants you to understand he is your redeemer. He is the one that pulls you out of slavery. But you may be thinking, well, wait a minute. We live here in the United States of America where we're not slaves. But we are. I want you to consider the words of Jesus here from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 34. And Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. You see, when it comes to your response after you commit sin, there are basically two choices. You can confess, I, a poor, miserable sinner, or choose not to confess, which means, more than likely, you would continue to practice that sin. Even after we confess, I, a poor, miserable sinner, we still may practice that sin, and then there becomes a different struggle. But now, let me go back to Jesus. Jesus reminds us, as we continue to practice that sin, that sin will lead to slavery of sin. But when we confess that sin, we're basically saying, Jesus, I don't want to be following this. Help me in the midst of this struggle. Now we're at the right place. So now let's get back to the book of Exodus. God had just delivered his people out out of the slavery from Egypt. And so now God is going to give these commandments so that we do not enslave ourselves in a different type of slavery. So let's just quickly look at these commandments. From Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, You shall have no other gods before me. No need to worry about the world's religions out there. There's only one God. There's only one God who delivers you from sin. There's only one God who takes on human flesh and blood and suffers in your behalf. That's a very loving God and a very gracious God. That's referring to Jesus. And we need to understand what Jesus does for us. He takes away the sins of the world. That means we've got to be sinners. So let's continue on. Verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. So why is it so important about the name of God? Well, You could say, this is our lifeline to God, so to speak. The psalmist states it this way, from Psalm chapter 50, verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. But if you misuse the name of God, then you cannot call upon God in the time time of trouble. If you don't believe and trust in God, obviously you're not going to call upon God in the time of trouble. So the name of God is extremely important. 
So there's a commandment about it. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, God gives us as many promises, and we need to continue to hear his word of promise and to receive that word of God in our ears. And when that word is attached to water, bread, and wine for a special purpose for the forgiveness of sins, this is God's design. So, we need to remember the Sabbath. And so we continue to gather where God's name is proclaimed and his sacraments are administered, typically here at peace. Verse 12, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Now, this commandment does not just apply to moms and dads, but actually applies to all who have authority over us. That's referring to the government, the church, and the family. But here's where things start getting interesting, because the first three commandments were directed in our relationship to God. Starting with this fourth commandment and the rest, it now focuses our attention to our neighbor. But how well do we trust authority? Well, it's something that every society struggles with. But as we struggle with authority, we're actually struggling with the system that God established to take care of you. God set up an earthly government. God placed you in a community of believers. God gave you your family for your protection. Verse 13, you shall not murder. Now you may think, hey, I finally got a commandment that I can keep until we remember that Jesus reminds us, even if you get angry with somebody, you have committed murder in your heart. Probably don't need to say much more about that. Verse 14, you shall not commit adultery. Just like the fifth commandment, don't think, hey, this one was an easy one to keep because it is extremely challenging. Just like the fifth commandment. Again, it's referring to the attitude of the heart. And Jesus reminds us, even if we look at someone who isn't our spouse, or if we start giving attention to someone in a very positive way who isn't our spouse, God calls us to be always faithful. And to put our spouse, you could say, is number two. God is number one. Remember, first commandment. But the spouse then is number two. But then how often do we keep our spouse as number two priority in our lives? Verse 15, you shall not steal. Sure, we probably did not participate in the looting riots, but we have we helped our neighbor keep and protect their property in all circumstances? If we take a real good hard look at our lives, we may find out that the answer should be no. Verse 16, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You know, you could sort of summarize this. If you don't have anything good to say about the other person, then don't say anything all at all. So I can immediately pick on the politicians. Hey, hey this is an election year, right? And how well do they say something good about their opponent? But as soon as I do that, I, I find myself breaking this commandment. Honest opinion? This commandment trips up Christians a lot more than they realize. Verse 17. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. Let me summarize. Has not God given you your daily bread, which you need to support this life? Then thank and praise God. You might be thinking, I do. Okay, then no grumbling. Instead, gratitude. Now, at this point, if you're going to sit there and throw up your hands and say, I give up. I can't keep these commandments. Now you're at the right place, at the right time. 
See, now you know you need a savior, a savior to deliver you from this slavery of sin because you cannot deliver yourself. That's exactly what these commandments are designed to teach us, that you and I, we need a savior. And as we realize we are forgiven by our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we return to these commandments because out of gratitude, we sit there and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have given me. Help me to use these commandments as a guideline for my life in this fallen world. And when we realize that we are constantly tripping over these commandments, we return to our Savior and confess, I, a poor, miserable sinner. And what does God do with Christians who trip over these commandments and then confess, I, a poor, miserable sinner? Well, we look to the cross of Jesus and we see our Savior and we hear the words of God, be forgiven, for Jesus died for you. Yes, we need these commandments just to remind us to be forgiven, for Jesus died for you. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, will continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.